Welcome to the syllabi analysis workshop. My name is Amber Vasquez Nodal. I'm one of the student success coaches here at the Student Success and Dream Center. Student learning outcomes. By the end of this workshop, students will be able to interpret their course syllabi, identify reasons for seeking help from their instructors, develop a professional educational email, plan a discussion with their instructors. For the purposes of this workshop, I'll go ahead and skip this. Um, this is would be an activity that we would do in person. What is a syllabus? A syllabus is your guide to a course and what will be expected of you in the course. Generally, it will include course policies, rules, regulations, and required texts, and a schedule of assignments. So what is the purpose of a syllabus? So it outlines your instructor's expectations for you. So for example, being on time for class, it guides your semester planning, an example of that is a calendar of material that you will be learning, assignments and tests that'll all be on there. Makes you knowledgeable about what you will learn and accomplish. So it'll have student learning outcomes similar to this workshop. It provides official course instructor and policy information. For example, a policy about late work. And for, we're going to skip this activity as this would be an, an in-person activity. So instructor and course information. So we'll have here is um, below that is office hours. Um, it'll also have textbooks a calendar and schedule of the assignments that you'll have. It'll also have the grading breakdown slash policy. Um, it'll also have the attendance policy, a technology policy, behavioral expectations and accommodations. And so we will touch on each of these components in detail later. So here is an example of a syllabus. Notice the red box highlights the course information, the instructor's contact information, and the instructor's office hour information. That's very important. And then notice um, the red arrows. They're pointing to attendance and participation, the course guidelines, homework, extra credit opportunities, Overall, a syllabus can tell you nearly everything you need to know about how a course will operate and what is expected of you. And now we come to this comic strip. So here, um, the comic strip is it's in the syllabus. So there's an instructor um, and a student or students in this comic clip. And the student is asking, what did we cover in class last week? And the instructor says, it's in the syllabus. What's your late homework policy? It's in the syllabus. What, when are your office hours? It's in the syllabus. How will my grade be computed? It's in the syllabus. And then at the very bottom of the comic strip, it says this message is brought to you by every instructor that ever lived. So this is something that I wanna emphasize how important it is to read your syllabus thoroughly before asking your professor a question related to the course, because most likely the answer will be in your syllabus. And to make it clear, I'm not discouraging you from seeking help from your professor because there are times when they are the ones that can only help you and not necessarily the syllabus. And I will expand on this on the next slide. So here again would be another activity. However, since we're not in person, we won't be doing that. And 
here we have identify reasons for seeking help. So the first one, you would seek help if you need clarification on a course on course content. So for example, if you're taking algebra and you were unsure how the instructor got a particular answer in the class, you can follow up with them in office hours. Another one is if you need clarification on an assignment or an exam that you did poorly on. So for example, you're unsure why you received the wrong answer. Another one is clarification on instructor's expectations. So for an example, an expectation is unclear on the syllabus. Another one is feedback. For example, you want more feedback on a paper or a presentation you completed. Support to improve your grade. So for example, you need one-on-one -on -one support from your instructor and or referrals to an on-campus service slash resource. Another one is a letter of recommendation. So for a scholarship, or maybe you're looking to transfer and you need a letter of support from your instructor. And finally, special consideration for personal circumstances. So for example, you experience a loss and you cannot complete an assignment on time. So you approach your professor for a possible extension on an assignment. Steps on how to communicate with your instructor. So first, determine when to meet. So locate the instructor's um, syllabus, navigate to the section where you can find their office hours. And if the office hours work with your schedule, attend the specific day and time specified. If office hours do not work with your schedule, schedule an appointment with your instructor via email. Tips for constructing an email. So the first one is make the subject line clear. The sooner your professor knows what you're asking, the sooner they'll be able to help you. Use a professional greeting, so avoid addressing professors as Mr. or Mrs and acknowledge their status. Make sure you know the correct titles, such as if they are a doctor or a professor. Thoroughly identify yourself. Even if your class size is small, your professor has plenty of other responsibilities, classes, and students. Help your professor recognize you quickly by introducing yourself with your first and last name, as well as the title and section number of your class. Remain formal. Remember, this is not a text message. Do not use abbreviations, emojis, or slang. Communicate clearly and concisely. Articulate what you need in one or two sentences. Be polite. Please and thank you goes a long way. It never hurts to add a line wishing them a good day or afternoon. End with a formal acknowledgement. Thank you best and sincerely followed by your first and last names are always a safe choice. And so here we have an email exam example. So as I mentioned in the previous slide, um, you for the subject line, you wanna include um, your first and last name, the course that you're um, taking with the instructor, as well as um, the section number, which would be the CRN number and what the purpose of your email is. So for this one, it's gonna be office hours. So it reads, good afternoon, Professor Valencia. I hope this email finds you well. My name is Jane Doe. I am currently in your Psych 101 class. I would like to meet with you to receive more feedback on my research paper. Unfortunately, your office hours do not work with my schedule. Is it possible to schedule an appointment with you outside your office hours? Thank you so much in advance for your time and consideration. Best, Jane Doe. And here we are brought to the next slide. So the second one is organize your discussion. Before attending office hours or your appointment, write down all your questions or concerns related to why you reached out for help in the first place. For example, if you need clarification on an exam that you did poorly on, <clears throat> identify which problems you need help with and why. 
<clears throat> the third one is discussion with your professor. Know your professor's last name or appropriate title, whether they go by professor or doctor. Arrive on time, ask to meet again if necessary, and ask about any additional resources to help you be successful in the class. And here's another activity that we'll be skipping. Textbooks. So required versus recommended. So what do they mean? Required means the texts and supplies are needed for the class. Recommended texts and supplies are listed to enhance learning. What do you do if you don't have textbooks yet? There are options from borrowing and renting, such as from the library, instructor, a peer, and online, such as Chegg and Amazon. There are options for purchasing from the bookstore here at Rio Hondo or online from Chegg or Amazon. There may be some options for free. You can search for uh, electronic um, options such as PDFs and um, maybe via the EOPS book grant. Calendar slash schedule. So here is an example of a calendar slash schedule on a syllab syllabus. So as you can see, it on the on the left side, there's a box highlighted in red that says week. And that lets you know um, what week uh, of the class it's referring to. So um, these are the specific dates that your professor is talking about that. Um, you'll be talking about specific topics and assignments. As you can see, if you move a little bit over to the right, it's topic is topics and assignments. So this gives you an idea of when you'll be talking about uh, certain content or when you'll have to do an assignment. And notice at the top as well, above the topics and assignments, this is subject to change. So maybe your professor didn't get a chance to lecture everything uh, the first week of your class. So maybe they might push back some things as a result, meaning that the whole calendar schedule would change because you, um, you didn't, or the professor didn't cover um, what was needed so you could do your homework, right? So just know that it can change at any time, but your professor will let you know. And then also you can see due dates. So it'll tell you when specific things are due. Um, so make sure to look at all those things as they are really helpful. And remember, schedules are a good tool to use, but are rough guides. The dates of discussions exams can change. So like I mentioned, the professors will communicate changes with you in class. So grading breakdown. You can find a breakdown of your grade in the class syllabus. So as you can see um, in this particular grade breakdown, you get 500 points um, for class attendance and participation, 50 points for one-on-one -on -one meetings with ID instructor, 50 points for group presentation, 50 points for journal assignments, and 50 points for e -I -E -Q -I assessment. 100 for annotated bibliography, 50 for first draft of the final paper, and 150 for the final paper. So these are all possible points that you can receive. However, um, given how your professor grades you, that determines whether how, how many of those points you actually get. And then at the bottom, it tells you the grading scale. So what you can expect um, given uh, the grade brackets that you fall into. So I wanna emphasize that it is your responsibility to keep track of what you have, submitted points on quizzes, exams, essays, and attendance. Remember grading scales and point breakdowns vary per class. Some are out of 100 and some can be out of hundreds of points. Converting points to percentages can be helpful. If any of this is confusing for the student, this is a great point of clarification to discuss during office hours.
grade policy. Keep track of your grades uh, because not all instructors use Canvas. Remember, according to the class breakdown, assignments weigh differently towards overall grade. And take advantage of extra credit opportunities. Look in the syllabus to see if they are available. If not, ask the professor. The worst thing that they can say is that they don't offer any extra credit opportunities. Absences. Absences policies are found in the syllabus. Instructor reserves the right to drop students if this student has missed more classes than allowed by absence policy. If you're going to be absent, you should contact the instructor if specified in the syllabus. Some classes have points for attendance and being absent may negative, negatively affect your grade. Drop deadlines. There are two drop deadlines during the semester. Drop deadline one, last day to drop classes online without fee penalty. And this deadline is in only for 16 week courses. Date for short term classes is approximately 10% of term. Last day to drop online without class appearing on transcripts. Drop deadline two, last day to drop classes online without a W, 75% of term. This deadline in only for 16 week courses, date for short term classes, check on your course syllabus. Accommodations. Accommodations through GSPS adjust the manner in which instructional and testing situations are presented or evaluated so that a student with a disability can demonstrate his or her knowledge in a fair and equitable fashion. DSPS determines responsible accommodations on a case-by-case -case basis. If you have not yet received services from DSPS and you feel that it would benefit you, please visit their office to get more information about supports offered and documentation processes. And below is the room number as well as their phone number. So again, it is important to read the syllabus before approaching your professor. This is a meme, it says, how I feel when you don't read the syllabus. And this is a look that your professor might have if you ask something that is in their syllabus. Any questions, comments, or concerns that you have, you can definitely reach out to the Office of Student Success and Dream Center. And I wanna thank you so much for your time. Here is our hours of operation, Monday through Thursday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. and Fridays, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. And you can contact us at 562-463-6650. Thank you so much for your time and have a great day.